Blue Lines drug gangs have been an ongoing issue for the region's police forces. They exploit young people so that drugs can be sold in more rural areas. Last month, Thames Valley Police made more than 80 arrests as part of a crackdown. But there are fears from senior officers it could be a problem that will be with us for a generation. The BBC spoken to one mother from Oxfordshire who lost her son after he was targeted by these gangs. Yeah, I can smile, I can laugh, I go to work, but some days I don't even want to get up. Ready? No. Hey. He was a great kid, he was very popular, he had lots of friends. He was hard work, but he was just so much fun. Things just escalated really. He was just like it was a complete personality change. I think it was through friends that had already been possibly exploited themselves. I really honestly don't think he realised how dangerous it was at first. I think he genuinely believed that these people were his friends. He was groomed, he was manipulated. Basically, it's child abuse. He was picking up drugs from down the train station from a drug dealer that had come from London. At the time, I had no idea. You know, it's horrible to see your family just in absolute bits. You know, I've never seen my dad cry before. And it was horrible. It's just affected so many people. I would say it's ruined my life. I'm lucky that I've got the family and friends that I've got, because if I hadn't, I don't think I'd still be here. Terrible experience, and one that a lot more people are hearing about. Joining me now, Lee Middleton, Chief Executive of the National Youth Agency, which has just produced a report on county lines gangs. Um, welcome to the programme, Lee. Uh, a growing problem? Sadly so, yes. I mean, a lot of the the general reporting uh, due to the lockdown, etc. People assumed that uh, that this had diminished, had, had shrunk. But actually, what we've learned was that the gangs have adapted. They've changed. They've they've modernised what they do. They've, they've they've like everybody had to just you know adapt what they do so that they can uh, still continue to prey on young people. But they right. they've done so with different types of young people, which is very worrying. Right. So the different types. I mean, they're, they're, we've had some, heard some cases of cuckooing and using very vulnerable people. This seems to be moving more into I don't know sort of middle class, rural, using more younger girls as well. You know, absolutely. So uh, when we look in the media, we, there's a perception of a young person who might get involved in this. And the, the gangs are used to this. So what they've done is adapted. So you know, the use of young women, the use of people with special needs, um, younger young people tend to fall below the radar of, of services that were there to protect young people sometimes. So um, the gangs have adapted. They are preying on those individuals because they're easier to get hold of um, and they're less likely to get caught. Uh, which what, means... what, what, what about the parents in this situation? If they are using younger and, you know, You'd think parents would now pick this up more easily. You would hope so. But I think, it, you know, our experience is a lot of this is done digitally in um, social media, in private messaging, which is all very encrypted. So it's much harder for parents to get a grip of, of what their child is doing. Uh, you know, we see examples where young people go off to school, but actually don't arrive at school, go and do a drug line and then return home at the end of the day. So the parent doesn't necessarily know they, there's anything wrong. Um, in the video you've just done with Jacob's mum, you know, his behaviour changed. And that's the thing everybody should be to really focused on and looking for you know, what is, is this a bit different this feels a bit odd and ask questions um that they would there would be more money around but there isn't i mean the drugs business when the thames valley police looked into this you know the arrests the searches but and a hundred vulnerable people in that week but also a lot of money recovered yeah well the drug dealers are making a fortune but they're making a fortune uh, out of exploitation of, of vulnerable young people and they'll deliberately pick those vulnerable individuals and um, young people do this sometimes because you know they want the latest shoes or the latest video game and it's a way of earning sort of relatively easy money quite quickly for them um that doesn't tend to last very long in our experience young people you know initially they the gangs use that as a way of getting you in but then they'll um then, then they'll drag you in and they'll hold on to you and that you don't get paid very much in the future because you owe the gang, you owe them uh, a debt and therefore they'll hold you accountable for that. And, and actually getting out of that is the is the hardest part for young people. And that's where you know every parent, every grandparent, every professional teacher up and down the country you know, needs to be really alert to these things. What is changing and, and asking questions and then you know getting help if necessary. 
and your responsibility um, with youth workers means as well, I suppose, that there's there's fewer of those around, isn't there? Certainly in Berkshire, we've reported on this. We have, yes. I mean, there's there's a, a billion pounds spent, uh, less spent on young people uh, in youth services today than there was 10 years ago. And one pound in every 16 cut from local authority budgets came from youth services. So, you know, the support that is in the community, should be in the community, that youth club that, you know, many familiar with popping along to where you'd talk to a trusted adult that would check on you, talk to you every week and would recognise those behaviour changes, those patterns. Um, they're just not there. We've lost them. And South East have been much harder hit in terms of cuts to youth services. There's very few local authorities delivering youth work as a professional service than we had even a decade ago. And, and that's a massive problem. And one of the reasons we're seeing the rise in exploitation of young people. That's worrying, isn't it? Liz, Liz Lefman, let's bring you and Paul Holmes back in here. Um, Liz, uh, in Oxfordshire, the youth services is a, as a, you know, a responsibility of local authorities. Um, something that's been seen cutbacks. And here you can see criminal gangs seeing a weakness and exploiting it. Yes, absolutely. And that's something that we are seeking to address. Um, for the first time in many years, we've put money into the budget to set up a new statutory, a, a new um, youth offer across the county. Um, and there's 1.5 million in this year's budget. And that's just the beginning because we recognize that there is a real need out there. Everything that has been said so far is absolutely right. Uh, we need to support the very good voluntary workers that we have in the, in the youth service at the moment. We, we have a lot of voluntary organisations who are working with young people, but they need support. They need support from the County Council. And that's something that we're absolutely pledged to do, to bring back a youth service, which is sorely needed. Right. Um, for Paul Holmes, why is the South East uh, being hard hit by this? Well, firstly, can I pay tribute to Jacob's mum? It's, it's an awful story to hear, and we do suffer from some of the county lines issues in my constituency, particularly in East Sea Town Centre. Um, we have put investment in into the South East. The government's brought the Youth Endowment Fund and the Youth Investment Fund, which is about £750 million, pounds, uh, which goes directly to targeting uh, you uh, to try and uh, make some progress in this area. But it is up to a local authority to make sure that they provide those youth services. In Hampshire, the County Council, they've got uh, the Troubled Families Programme. They've also got um, some uh, direct involvement in trying to intervene in these in these cases. But we do need to really... Can those councillors, Conservative councillors, say if they have more money, they could do more? Well, absolutely. But we're also... It's about partnership working. So, of course, we need to put more investment into this locally. Hampshire County Council is doing a good job of doing that. But we also need to make sure that the police are well funded. We've got 300 new police officers in Hampshire coming on board. Uh, the police locally are, are really taking this issue uh, seriously. I met the new police and crime and commissioner last week for Hampshire, yeah. and this is her number one priority. So it's about partnership working between local authority and the police to make sure we get rid of this problem. But you can't work in partnership with youth workers if they're not there. Well, in Hampshire, I'm to, uh, in my local area, we do have the people uh, in the local authority working with the police to make sure that we tackle this problem. They, those people are there. And as I say, other local authorities, like Liz's local authority, are making the decision now to put investment back into those areas. Right, Lee Middleton. I mean, we had an assessment of 10 times as much needed for catch-up learning. How much more is needed for youth work, would you say? Just to, just to put the lid on this criminal exploitation. Yeah, 10 times as much as going in today um, is, is probably the answer. It's is several it? billion pounds into frontline youth services. Um, but it needs to be professional youth services. Uh, we've heard from colleagues here talking about uh, volunteers, and, and, mm. and volunteers are amazing, but we need trained, professional, qualified experts. You wouldn't ask a teaching assistant to teach a class. You'd want the teacher at the front. It is exactly the same in the youth sector. Okay. Thanks for joining us, Lee.